Hello, and welcome to the Powerline Systems video on updates to alignments and XY-based structures now available in versions 18 and 19. This video will cover the command to convert XY-based structures to station-based structures, updates to the conversion process from alignment-based structures to XY-based structures, the command to swap alignments for station-based structures, and the new feature to table edit alignments. The typical structure type in PLS CAD is called a station-based structure. It is placed on an alignment at a particular station. If you have multiple alignments in a project, the station of the project progresses in the positive direction as the alignments increase. A structure may be displayed on multiple alignments, however, it only has one station, so is technically only part of one alignment. The alternate type of structure in PLS CAD is called an XY-based structure. It is not associated with an alignment, but is placed on a coordinate. XY-based structures will be listed at the end of the structure staking table, as well as at the end of structure lists in the report settings. Because they are not associated with an alignment, they are very easy to place at specific locations regardless of their offset. See the PLS CAD XY structures video for more details on building a PLS CAD line model with XY based structures. The link for that video is posted in the description. To demonstrate the new and updated features, we'll look at a simple model with two alignments. With the plan and profile displayed side by side, you can see both alignments. The first thing to note is the alignments are going in opposite directions. The solid red lines correspond to alignment 1, and the dashed blue lines correspond to alignment 2. Alignment 1 starts with PI number 1 at station 0, runs over to PI number 2, then up to PI number 3 at station 510. Alignment 2 starts at PI number 4 at station 810, and runs down to PI number 5 at station 1310. There is a single circuit structure at each end of both alignments, and there is also a double circuit structure that falls between the two alignments. Currently, the structure has been added as part of alignment 1. You can easily determine this by using structures modify and looking at the station associated with this structure. While here, please note the line angle is negative 22.62 degrees, the orientation angle is 0 degrees, and the offset is 0 feet. This will be important later. Other ways to determine which alignment your structure is on include looking at the profile view. This structure's label information is being displayed on alignment 1. While you can see that the structure is on alignment 2, no label information is displayed there. You can also look at the true structure number. You can see the true structure number falls between structures 1 and 3 on the first alignment, which confirms it is on alignment 1. A true structure number is based on the order in which the structures appear along the alignments. As the station gets bigger, so does the structure number. As we start using the new features to move the double circuit structure around, you'll notice the true structure number will change according to its position in the model. Now that we all agree the double circuit structure is on the first alignment, let's consider a situation where we realize that the assets for this structure need to be associated with alignment 2 instead. We can use the new feature to swap alignments to very easily move this structure. Start by pressing the S key on your keyboard to activate the snap settings for structure center. Now, to access the swap alignments command, left click on the structure to open the structure entity context menu. If you've used the left click menu in the past, you'll notice that it has changed. We've added a new structure alignment submenu to contain the new features in one location. You can see in this new submenu that the option to convert structure to station based is not active. This is because structure 2 is already a station based structure. Only the commands that can be performed on the structure will be active. So, we'll start by selecting swap alignments. 
In the dialog that opens, we can see which alignment the structure is currently on, and we have a drop-down for the available alignments that we can move it to. When we click OK, a report is generated showing the existing alignment and the new alignment. One thing to remember is that the station of the structure will change to match the new alignment. As the report shows, this means the true structure number will change. This also means the true structure number will change for other structures in our model. Looking at the profile view, we can still see the shared structure on alignment 1, but now the structure labels are displaying on the second alignment. The true structure number has been updated as the report indicated. Structure 3 is now structure 2. Structure 4 is now structure 3 and the double circuit structure is structure 4. Using structures modify on the shared structure, you'll also notice the orientation is now negative 180 degrees. The offset is 50 feet and the line angle is 0 degrees. The orientation is 180 degrees because the alignment is going in the opposite direction so an orientation is needed to ensure the wire positions don't move. This is also why there's an offset and the line angle has been updated. These values all correlate to the position of the shared structure in relation to alignment too. Using the swap alignments command will update the offset, the orientation, and the line angle of your structure in order to preserve the global location of the structure and its attachments. What this means is your wire positions and your structure location will not change when you move the structure from one alignment to another. This also means that if the orientation of a structure is changed, the wind on structure calculation might also be affected. When using the swap alignments command, you should always recheck your structure usage, wire tensions, and clearances. Let's look at a situation where we have an XY based structure that we want to be on an alignment. To simulate this situation, we first need to convert a structure to XY based. This is something that can be done in the software by left clicking on the station based structure and using the new alignment submenu to select convert structure to XY based. If you've used this command in the past, you might notice another update to the XY based structure conversion process, the addition of a pick list. In earlier versions of the software, converting the structures was done with a range function. By utilizing a pick list, we now have the option to convert any structure in our model to an XY based structure without worrying about intermediary structures. For now, we'll select structure 4. As expected, the true structure number will change. This is because all XY based structures are listed after any station based structures. In the profile view, you'll notice the structure is still displayed on alignment 1, but if you use structures modify, you'll see that this is in fact an XY based structure. XY based structures will be shown in the profile view on the first alignment they fall in proximity of, in this case, alignment 1. Now that this structure is an XY based structure, we can look at the situation where we already have an XY based structure that we want to convert to a station based structure. Left click on the structure and choose the submenu option to convert structure to station based. The XY structure is displayed at the bottom of the structure list. Select it and click OK. In the report that generates, we can see that the structure number has been updated based on the station and we can also see that the structure is on alignment 1. Our true structure numbers have updated for all of the structures in our model and we can now rerun all of our structure usage, section usage, and survey point clearance reports to validate our design. Using these commands provides a reliable 
and easy way to reconfigure your alignments. For example, if your alignment is backward, you can convert the structures on it to XY based structures, delete the existing PIs, add the alignment correctly, and convert the structures back to station based structures. There is another new feature that will allow you to reconfigure your alignments. In the software, navigate to Terrain Alignment Table Edit Alignment. This table lists out each of your PIs and the alignments they are on. You can easily reorder PIs in your model by right-clicking on a PI and dragging it to the desired location. You can also double-click on any PI to update its XYZ values. There are buttons at the bottom of the table which allow you to reconfigure your alignments in other ways as well. Add PI. This command will add a PI to your model. You can then double click on it to update the XYZ value. Delete PI deletes the PI you currently have selected. This is handy for the situations where a single PI alignment may have been accidentally created. Join Alignment allows you to join two alignments together. Select the last PI of the alignment and it will be joined with the alignment immediately following in the list below. Split Alignment allows you to break an alignment. The PI you have selected will be the first PI of the new alignment. Please keep in mind that you cannot have an alignment with only one PI. When you use the Split Alignment command, there must be other PIs above the one you selected, and you cannot select the last PI. Reverse Alignment allows you to reorder your PIs so that the first is last and the last is first. We hope you find this video helpful for using the new and updated alignment commands. For more information about our software, including additional videos and tech notes, please check out our website at www.powerlinesystems.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, and other information, please contact the email addresses shown on the screen. Thank you for watching this video and your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.